welcome Aaron Auer. Thank you, Jeff. He is a preaching statesman, I tell him all the time. But I'm so blessed to be honored to be with this great gathering again, the 8th Annual. This is my, I believe, 6th or 7th time. And, you know, the development of things that we've been going around the state the last five, six years, hot and heavy, telling all Oregonians about our roots, our Christian roots, our Christian heritage. Jason Lee, Oregon's first missionary, he's the founding father of Oregon. He is the George Washington of our great state. And the thrill, the overwhelming response has been amazing from you and the people knowing these things now and finding them out. And we have a heritage that's not separate from a secular heritage. This is our identity. He represents us in Washington, D.C. with Bible and petition in hand. The only statue I can find in the world that represents the first and second great commandment. To love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is to love thy neighbor as thyself. True petitioning is to do what's right for your fellow man, to love thy neighbor as thyself. And we must petition with what saith the Scripture and what saith the Constitution. And to have this mighty monument of our state in Washington, D.C., Bible and petition in hand is so rare, it's so unique, he's a national treasure, and you know because of these things, everybody needs to know, even the nation. But our legislature, the 77th session, decided... We need to replace our heritage, not to just add another statue, but to add one to replace and remove. And you know what the scripture says? Remove not, in Proverbs 22, 28, remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. You don't touch that. It's sacred. It's, it's righteous. It is who we are, our identity. And so when I went to the state, county by county, the legislature, they heard the story too. And we have the most wicked bill that came forward because you take away the Bible, what do you have left? I found myself before that hearing committee, given testimony, found out about it just a few hours before, made it by the grace of God, and within 10 minutes the chairman said, we get your point. It passed in the House, went over in the Senate, and thank God, obviously there's some good people in the Senate, good in the House too, but it died there in the Senate committee. Never moved. That's the hand of the Lord because they were partnering with the Oregon Historical Society, who is the so-called experts of our history, the society. But they were partnering to replace our heritage, the Jason Lee statue. Thank God it died. Amen? We shared that last year. We shared it with a big book of heaven that we have. But they brought it up again. And you know what happened? Same thing. Passed in the house. Went over to the Senate. I'm here to give testimony to the glory of God. It died again. Woo! That's good news. We got to give good report. And thank God for the good things that are happening. And so you're making it happen. We're preserving our heritage. And I'm, I'm here to tell you. If we don't give our all to preserve our heritage and the truth, we'll compromise on something at some point. That's why I can't support anybody that will vote to replace our heritage. Can't do it. Because it is so vital and important to bring back God and governing and to know our roots and to know the education of Oregon started with Jason Lee and those Indian children. I've got a quick report here. I just got back from Washington, D.C., Statuary Hall where Jason Lee's statue is. I got a call from a dear lady. She's here with us. May I tell them who, who she is or not? Yay or nay? What's your name back there, young lady? Roberta Tadhill, 91 years, going strong on fire here. She calls me up. She says, Aaron, pastor, we got to go to Washington, D.C. There's a ceremony to honor George Washington, the man of prayer. And... And it's 225 years of his inauguration. It's led up by Congress and Michelle Bachman and Mike Huckabee's the MC and, and George Washington, when he was summoned, he kissed the Bible, the book of heaven. Remember that? And they were going to give honor to that. And she said, we got to go and lay a wreath at the Jason Lee statue because she's been opposing that most wicked bill. 
I said, I'd love to go, but it's for members of Congress only. Not a member yet. How do you get in? Well, let's go. The spirit of faith is what's going to take our state and our nation back. We must have that. And so I said, I'll go. We go. And I thought maybe we could get in by one of our congressmen. Well, you must be invited and cleared. They didn't let me go. I know that's a surprise. <laughs> but I'm there. And I know the Lord wanted me in there. I said, Lord, you brought me here. And I'm walking around this, the nation's capital praying. I'll join in with this ceremony. This was May 7th. And I thought, why don't I just walk in? So that's what I did. I walked in. They handed me a badge there going through checkpoint where you check your guns and ammunition. Amen. Because I believe in carrying Bible and rifle in hand. That's a great way to pack, my brother. You know that. We carry our 50 caliber around with us. But listen, I walked in. The ceremony started. And I'm standing there next to Jeff Cruz. You ever heard of Jeff Cruz? filibustering for 21 hours speaking. You ever done that lately? Speak for 20. I know Jeff, he is a great speaker. Did I, who did I say, Jeff? Okay, well, you know the spirit of what I'm saying. 21 hours speaking. That's supernatural. And I look because they're praying. They're, they're praying. These are members of Congress to pray for our nation because we need help from heaven without that first and foremost like our founding fathers did and knew we will not be able to finish what they started. And so here they are praying, and there's, there he is, Mr. Cruz, Senator Cruz, right next to me, praying, him and his father. And he spoke. There was about 20 to 40 members that showed up. Of all six, 700 members of Congress, only 20 to 40 showed up. But here's what happened. The ones that were there, the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Amen? Amen. And they're praying and seeking the Lord. It was so historic. And I stood there, Brother Jeff, Jeff, I know Jeff. No, this Jeff, I, I'm telling just brother. I stood next to our hero, the most heroic faith of Oregon, pioneer of a faith, Jason Lee, that for the next hour and a half is a witness to these things. We got to walk in. We got to just do it supernaturally. And that's why when Jeff had me on his radio program, we got to get him back on his program, don't we? Needs to be heard to the state. He's going to be. But one day when he interviewed me, and it was, it was April 1st, and I normally don't do this, but I said, uh, you remember this, Jeff? I said, I'm running for governor. This was like several years ago. No thought, no interest. I just felt to say that, and I've never seen such a perplexed look on his face. I said, April Fool's, you know. Well, come to find out, when I went about the state, county by county, 36 counties, I thought if we found a man or a woman who knew our heritage and would campaign based on the knowledge of our heritage, let's get them in there. We can do it. And people begin to say, Aaron, why don't you go for it? You're preaching to legislators. You're preaching and working with Native Americans. You're going to all these different churches. You're working to get this back in our education. Why don't you do it? And I thought, you know what? If we do it, I've got to be who I am. A couple, two, three years later, I've decided before the Lord, Oregon needs another preaching statesman. And that's why I'm asking you and all Oregonians, are you ready for a governor who will govern with the governor, the Lord himself, the book of heaven, our heritage, and the Constitution, yea or nay? God bless Pastor you all. Pastor Aaron Hour. Thank you, brother.